Hey friends, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop, and we're building a Raritan flat car. If you've missed the other episodes, the Raritan is a three quarter inch scale or three and a half inch gauge live steam locomotive. You can get the book and castings from a gentleman named Joe Tansky, Tansky Model Engineering up in Eden, New York. And um, right now what I'm building is the flat car or riding car. And this is the latest episode, of course, in the, in the series. And I think of all the ones I've done, this should be the most helpful for you. Because looking at the plans, I mean, no offense to Mr. Morewood who drew the plans, but it, to me anyway, is just difficult to get an idea of what these, these trucks actually look like. Um, you know, even though, let me show you the view. Here we go. Okay, the top view is pretty good, but it's split like half and half, so you don't get a, an overall view of it. Even the side side view or the end view, it's a cutaway thing, and I'm like, I, I just couldn't wrap my arms around it. So this this video should be a fantastic illustration of the point of like why I'm doing this channel to to show the people that can't make sense out of the blueprints or the drawings, like what the thing actually looks like as you make it. So this, these are the completed trucks. I've got two of them here. Let me tilt the camera down and you can see them better. This was an absolute blast to make. I really, I've enjoyed every minute of this process. And um, let me see if I can, there we go. So the trucks are basically done. And I'm going to take them apart, do a couple of fine-tuning, finishing things on them, and paint them. I'll paint the outsides black, um, you know, the end parts that show. None of this stuff is going to show. And I'll paint the wheels, just the cast iron portion in the middle. Um, probably not do a lot of other stuff, but I do need to Loctite the wheels in place. So I'll be doing that. So the next episode, when I when I uh, the next episodes, we'll be working on the actual frame of the flat car itself, the bolsters, and and there's a, z a zillion details in these things. But the trucks are to me the most the interesting engineering part of it, and I'm really thrilled with how they came out. They look very cool, if you ask me. Anyway, let me hold it up there so you can get an idea. Just. It was a blast building these things. I really, I've enjoyed the last several, I guess a couple of months, um, all the little parts and pieces that go in there. And they're, it's a really neat design. You know, the brakes do work and it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool to put them together. So anyway, rather than prolonging the uh, experience and, and showing you the, the painting and all that stuff, I'm going to have this be the last episode uh, the, yeah, in this in this part about making the trucks and um, I'll bring you back when we start making some of the other parts and pieces. So as always, if you would ha ask any questions that you might have, I'll be delighted to answer them <laughs> as best I can. Um, please, if you have no questions but you want to encourage me, I do appreciate if you could just give me a thumbs up and um, you know, enjoy and have a great week, and I will see you next time. Thanks again for being part of the journey, and I look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions or, or seeing that thumbs up. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. All right, for the first night of assembling the trucks, I decided to concentrate on the brake shoes and the levers and assemblies like that. In fact, I always wondered what kept these in because there's no nothing to hold them in the upper pins, but it's the the fact that these are fastened at the bottom. You basically, the, the process is, and I'll, I'll do this on camera with the other set, but you put one side together and put the wire in, and then you slide it in here, do a test fit, and then put this together, put the wire in over here, simply put. A um, couple of things I did learn. I did have to file a little bit down on one of the ears just to go, give a little better spacing and fit. And also, because of the silver solder, because I had nice fillets on the inside of the silver solder pieces, I used a little countersink just to give myself a little uh, extra clearance there. 
and I think it'll be helpful for um, a little wiggle room for the parts for the arms that hang down. So one fun evening, a little suggestion. I had some thin brass wire I could use just to get stuff started. Some little steel wire to hold things in place. And then the miniatured, miniature uh, wire bending and cutting tools that my daughter gave me these for Christmas a couple of years ago and they're really handy. I think she got them at a craft store as a whole set and I will tell you they're very handy. But I was able to end up using the larger copper wire, the 37 thou diameter is 18 gauge I think. I bought this at Lowe's. Yeah, 18 gauge it says. It was, you know, not a, not a high price. And it looks like it worked very well, so I think that'll be fine. Also, a couple of hemostat clamps to uh, for the fiddly parts. Didn't have to use the file so far, but pleased with how everything's coming together. All right, day two of test fitting things together with the trucks. The cool thing is, it's um, it generally looks good. I've checked the back spacing and the uh, wheel wheel. Uh, tread spacing everything looks good the geometry looks fine and in fact the brakes when I lift the brake shoe assemblies up into place they they do come into the right spots on the wheels there it is a little tight in here I just um, I won't go into detail but I'm gonna have to disassemble and I guess the the whole point is it's good news actually that it's a little tight because I can file down and make a little extra space where where it's needed just to, um, to help everything fit together. So um, I'll be taking it apart, but I wanted to show like the intermediate thing. And if you're doing this, don't get freaked out by a little setback, you know, that if, if everything doesn't fall into place perfectly, um, probably just means that I need it, it was not as loose as it could have been. So I'll be playing with it. I'll bring you back when we have a little bit better fit and I'll report on what was adjusted. I was taking things apart and I thought I'd take a little video of the brake shoes and how they contact the wheels. You can get a good a picture of the alignment there and how the hangers hold the shoes in place. That's kind of cool. Alright, so got the frames fit in a nice position and I don't have anything um, Loctited together yet, so it looks a little unusual. You'll see it moving things moving around But as you might recall, I've I bought shielded bearings and They are a good bit wider than the non shielded kind. So Basically, I don't need these fancy little brass bearing shields that we made and I removed them and because the problem was with them in place it made the uh, the side castings not fit. I might be able to go ahead and take the side castings and, and mill the little hole a little bit deeper for them. That might be a good solution. But I, because I'd, I'd rather not do that, I decided to take them out and then test fit it. And look, everything fits perfectly. Even if, I don't know if this will show up or not. Let me flip it around because on this side, this brake arm it, it moves and goes right into position. Let me see if I can raise it up. I don't know if that'll show, but here, I'll lift this, lift this up. So this set of brake arms here on this side moves fine. Oh, no, actually it's the one, that's this side. This side is a little smoother here. So let me, over here on this side, it moves and the brakes make contact exactly where they're supposed to on the, the brake shoes on the wheels. So I do, the only thing I'm, what I'm trying to say is the only thing I need to do, I need to get this side to be a little bit looser and I've identified where some tight spots are. So I'm going to take this whole thing apart and basically just do a little bit of filing on these arms and double check and make sure it moves smoothly and then we should be good to go. I mean, the, the trucks are solid. There's a little bit of movement, just like I showed when I first filed these things down. But they're, they hold together. Um, not, you know, once the wheels are loctited in place and um, everything's fastened together, I think it's going to be just fine. So I'm really excited about that. And just wanted to point out, if you buy the thick, extra thick shielded bearings, 
you probably don't need these things. I will, I'm going to take this apart now and I will bring you back when I have basically have it all put together. I'm going to get the fit arranged, do a couple of other minor things that I've noticed and once I'm completely satisfied with this set then I'll take it all apart and paint the, at least the side castings. I don't I don't know if I'm going to paint the wheels or not. There's not much that's going to be visible, uh, sadly. So may not worry about that at all. But I, I am going to do some paint and then I'll do the final assembly. So I'll bring you back for the next process. Once the once I've got all the fitment ready, I'll show you that what that looks like. And we also have to make the uh, brake bar that goes across underneath. Um, so I'll just do some silver soldering and some fitting of these lever arms and clevises that we have over here. Alright, I just I removed a little bit off here. I filed, you know, a few hundred strokes with a coarse file and that's all it took to free this up. So I think this fits just perfectly now. You can see how the brake shoes are able to slide up and engage. Really is a neat little design. And I was, you know, I was concerned about how all these things would stay together and are these pins long enough. I made them 400 thou, these pins right here, and it seems just fine. So, very pleased with, with how the uh, brake assemblies are situated and their movement and ready to engage the wheels. So, next step, I'll do some other just little fine tuning things and bring you back when I have the, everything's satisfactory. Um, now that I think about it, I guess what we'll do, we'll, we'll put it all back together. We'll make the, um, the assemble with the clevises and make the silver soldering for this, the uh, bent arm, get that all, all together before we take it apart for paint. All right, we're back and uh, I've got the trucks reassembled again, got the pins in. And actually, I'll show you an aerial view here. I've started to assemble the brake assembly, the, put some of the clevises together. And I wanted to get an, a feel for, with the uh, brake bars in position, is the stated distance in the plans, is that actually what I need for the bent bar? Because that's really the next major thing, is cutting that thing off, silver soldering those clevis ends onto it. And I just took a measurement here with my digital caliper just center to center holding it that way and sure enough the, the number the measurement comes in right on the plan so not going to do that tonight but I'm going to double check it again tomorrow and perhaps go ahead and, and uh, cut the bar and silver solder those ends on well I've got it together like this I thought I'd make a cool video I could kind of show you the undercarriage a little bit Obviously, it's not all in the permanent position, but and that's one of the things I want to do is double check. You know, push the the brake pads, the brake shoes right up to the wheels. You can see I sort of did that. I've got some little wire ties there, generally holding it in place. A view of the other side, but it's a pretty cool design and assembly. Pretty neat. I can't wait to actually fully finish this pair of trucks. That'll be That'd be pretty cool. Then I can do the other one. So I'm going to cut off the little ends after carefully measuring the length of the little bent rod. So I'm just um, putting it in place. It's with These aren't silver soldered on there yet, but it's easy to see that the, um, the dimensions are going to be good there. So I'll, I'll just adjust the dimensions carefully before I silver solder that and bring you back once I have that silver soldered. Preparing to do the silver soldering, I just wanted to show how I have adjusted, make sure I had the, the openings. I got the, the, the centers of the holes lined up right at the exact distance. Got the flux and the silver solder in place, and I'll be using my little torch with the oxypropane set up to silver solder. The finished part came out pretty nice, and we'll test fit it, and. We'll pretty much be done with these trucks. Let me show you the actuator, actuation of the brake shoes. So when I move on this lever here, it pushes the shoes outboard into the wheels. Show you this way. There we go. And if I roll it a little bit, roll it, 
and then press it stops the, the rotation of the wheels probably kind of hard to see on this but it works and I'm really pleased about it I'm gonna move the camera around let's see let's just grab it and show you some different angles there we go maybe that hopefully that shows a little bit okay hopefully that's pretty clear next thing i'm going to do i'm going to take this uh i'm actually i'm going to leave the this one just like it is and go ahead and assemble the other one so while i remember how to do this and then when i have them both assembled and working then i'll take them all apart and paint them bring you back for that all right hey just like that got this was the first set we finished Put the second set together in no time. Basically learned enough lessons from putting the first set together that the second second set went a lot smoother, a lot faster. So now, let me pull the camera around so you can see them both. Really excited about getting them done this far. So now the idea is there's a couple small things I, I want to do to each one. So I made a list for like finishing items for them. And I'll uh, take them apart carefully, keep the pieces together, and then do the finishing. I, I think for, well, all I'm going to do is paint the outer castings black, and then the inner inner. I'll just paint the insides of the wheels. I'll probably just pull a Keith Appleton and brush paint those while they're off. And then once they're done, and the paint's dry, then I can put them back together. I can Loctite the wheels in place on the axles and put the assemblies together for good. May, the only other thing I can think of is the steel components in here. Um, I could put some gun blue on them just as a rust preventive. I may do that, but pretty excited to get this far.